This is Sean OTD, and thanks for watching. Is it worth it today? IPv3 LI VR. All right, so as always, let's just jump right into it. Uh, this is the IPv3 LI VR. Um, the VR is a special edition version of the IPv3 LI. The IPv3 LI, um, they come in black and silver. The special edition, they don't actually have anymore. There was a limited run. Now they're over. You can actually update the IPv3 LI to 200 watts like the VR comes. So uh, to make that one like the special edition one, all you do is you actually plug into your port and then that's it. You, you go to the site and you up, uh, upload the uh, new firmware and, and it unlocks your, your mod and gives you more power. Uh, this one's pre-upgraded. It does have the carbon fiber on it. Um, the other ones are just plain black or plain uh, uh, grayish silver. Um, you can get wraps for these mods. Obviously, I'm not going to wrap this one because it happens to be the um, particular mod that is a special edition. So, um, but since it's the same functions as the regular IPv3 LI, I'm using this as the uh, indicator for all of the IPv3 LIs and VRs. So um, let's go ahead and get started on this. Uh, first of all, the buttons are very, very solid. I've been carrying it for a while. Um, I like it a lot as far as the power. It's one of the lightest mods. It's a, it's a dual 18650 mod. Um, it's pretty comfortable overall. Um, and the, the surprising thing is really the weight. Um, it is literally probably the thinnest walled mod. The most difficult thing is actually opening the sliding door. Um, you'll see a lot of people just do that. That takes time um, to get used to it for some reason. Uh, and I can't even do it every time still. Um, you, know, you have to have the right particular touch to pull that open. As if not, if you put too much pressure, you can't slide it open. And I don't know why, but uh, you know, it takes a little bit of practice to open the door. And you'll hear this from a lot of people. So if you don't have the right touch, the door just will not open. This uh, does have a touch sensor up here. Um, I did not know this. I uh, went to the, my local vape shop where my friend's at and um, had no idea about this mod. And I w he was trying to build himself a set of coils and he was trying to put it all together and he had a bunch of customers come in. I was like, oh, I'll finish building that for you. He was like, thanks. So I had the top off and I'm sitting it there and I'm trying to straighten out one of the coils and I touched this. And I was like, okay, well, in itself is not bad, but if you happen to bump and turn on the LED, the mod fires. So I had bumped that as I was pushing on with my palm and pulling with my fingernail, pushing on it, and then I had rested my fingers on it and activated the mod. And it burned through my fingernail, touched my finger, I went, whoa! And stunk up the whole store of burning fingernail. So uh, to the point that he actually bought another uh, Addy that night on purpose because it just reeked that bad. He couldn't get the smell out of it. <laughs> so uh, you can actually deactivate the touch sensor. You can deactivate it by simply doing that. There, touch off. Uh, down uh, the down button and the fire button will turn it off. The up button and the fire button turns it on. So um, ever since then, he's had his disengaged. <laughs> because, uh, we have all learned the hard way that that's, uh, that's a bad thing. I would have preferred for the touch sensor to have been like here or even in place of the button. The button could have been up here and the touch center sensor could have been here and I would have been much more happy with that than actually on top of it because some Addies, when you screw them on there, the holes face right towards your finger. So if you do a kind of a motion, you're gonna be blowing all that hot vapor right on your finger if you're using the, the touch sensor. And now some Addies will go out the sides, some will go out this side. So it just depends on how they're threaded. Um, I don't think that the, um, 
the battery power is as, as good as the Segeli as far as the uh, power output, um, but close, very close. Um, the battery uh, life is a comparable to the Segeli. Um, the Snow Wolf um, is pretty comparable, so you kind of have those three and they're running for each other. You have the Snow Wolf, the Segeli uh, 150, and then the IPv3 LI. Uh, all of those are pretty interchangeable, uh, but this is the lightest one of the mods. It's all pretty much aluminum for the most part all the way around the mod, uh, so there's not a lot of plastic to it. Uh, there's no glass on it like with the Snow Wolf. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a pretty solid mod. Um, it's kind of a kind of a roughhouse mod. You can kind of beat on it a little bit, and if it gets a little scratched up, you don't feel too bad about it. Uh, right now, they're rolling pretty cheap online for right around 100 bucks. Most vape shops have them for about 120. So, you know, again, you're still in that same ballpark of price. Um, so I actually uh, um, I've been using this off and on for a while because um, I don't like to do an out of the box review on a mod until I really know the mod. It's one of those uh, interchangeable mods. So if you don't want to get a Segeli because you want more power, you want 200 watts of power, they start with 165, I believe, out of the box for the IPv3 LIs. The VR is 200, so if you happen to get lucky and score one on the internet somewhere, great. You know, you have 200 watts right out of the gate. If you happen to go and buy the traditional version, then you have to update it and the uh, bad thing about that is be careful because uh, Pioneer for you will not exchange your mod if you brick it. Um, if something happens in the midst of you actually doing uh, the update on here, it wipes the information off and it puts the information on. So kind of a simultaneous thing. So what happens is if you happen to have a bad cable, it has a short in it or if something happens with your computer or you bump it and the wire becomes un 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 detached for a moment or partially connected then as it wipes the information you cannot load information back on it the circuit board is shot it's done it's over it becomes a brick so when i say if you brick it they will not replace it they consider it user error so be very careful whenever you up update your ipv3 li's now, once you update them, they are 200 watts, just like the VR is out of the box. So, just be, be wary on that. Make sure all, the, all your connections are ready. Make sure everything's there. You know, make sure you don't have any pets or children that are going to come pull any cords or anything, so that way you can do it uninterrupted. Because uh, I know someone that has bricked one, and it's an expensive mistake, because then you have to replace the mod. So in closing, I guess, uh, the main question is, is it worth it? I definitely say it's worth it. I definitely believe it's worth money. So yes, it is definitely worth it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Vape on.